Welcome to Uncaged, a show celebrating thought leadership from today's top business leaders. Today we have Christina Dolan. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about her background, but we're very lucky to have her on the show today. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the world of commerce tomorrow. Um, as I mentioned, we have Christina Dolan with us today. Christina is the CEO and founder of Inside Chains. Inside Chains works with organizations to get beyond the hype through solution development and product management to drive new business models powered by data and networked layers for trust. Christina has honestly probably one of the most incredible backgrounds that anyone could possibly have in the technology finance um, and data space. She's been an engineer, a computer scientist, an entrepreneur. She's an alum of MIT uh, and the MIT Media Lab. Um, she's co-founded some very, very important companies. I would say that, you know, in general, uh, Christina has been a, a, a fundamental uh, founding builder of products and businesses that really are enabled by data and connectivity. And um, today she's really focused on a new topic. She has um, some new a new book coming out. She also has a lot of other work that she's pushing out uh, on the ESG and sustainability space, especially connected into um, cybersecurity, uh, ESG, you know, the environment, uh, social and governance, so the, the ways that companies are approaching those areas. We're going to talk to Christina a little bit more about that today. Christina, thanks so much for having for joining us on Uncaged. Man, thank you so much for having me. So, Christina, I mean, before we get into the work that you're doing in the ESG uh, space, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and and how did you end up focusing on this uh, now? So my background is engineering, computer science, and uh, I've always been at the crossroads of technology and building products and businesses. And um, throughout my career, I've been launching companies, um, you know, at the beginning of the sort of dot-com phase, it was all about connectivity and content. And we've moved into uh, a sort of a data-driven world that these new business models are totally driven by connectivity and the use of new economic models around data. And so um, I, I just recently uh, had a publisher uh, publish my book on, uh, on ESG, which I co-authored with a wonderful uh, person who had worked in this space as well. Uh, and the reason why this is so interesting is because this data, this ESG data, which is somewhat ambiguous and doesn't necessarily mean the same thing to uh, different people with different lenses. But what's interesting is that the whole purpose of ESG is about risk. It's about a risk of an organization to the community, to the employees. And one of the areas that I've been focusing on, of course, is cyber. And cyber presents one of the largest uh, risks that there is in, in the world. Uh, and for infrastructure, for um, hospitals, uh, as well as your financial data, your personal data, and even for businesses. So cyber will actually take a, a business down faster than COVID did. And so it's an interesting space. And you know, ESG obviously has become the new metric for investors. And so being from in the, you know, somebody who's been in the data space for a long time, all these things have sort of converged, which is why I'm focused on them. I would say, Christina, you know, today, uh, if you're not a company that's uh, that's thinking about what what your standards, what your practices are on the environment and social, and you're not following good governance, you're 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 not going to be in business much longer. And so, but I, but I I do think we're at a special moment where this stuff is speeding up. Um, you know, when and congratulations, obviously, on on your book. Um, what was the uh, really the eureka moment that led to you kind of coming up with this plan and strategy to put this book together? Well, I've always been in the sort of data and connectivity space, you know, all throughout my career. I mean, most recently in the fintech um, space uh, around uh, data. And um, 
a publisher reached out, and I guess after uh, you know Biden won, uh, his public publisher was saying, "Wow, this is a it's a hot topic, and we have a lot of students that are studying this, and it's important for them to have an understanding of what and why. Um, what is this ESG, and why do we care about it? And we've heard a lot about the environment, the E, right? But I don't think people understand the S and the G, the social impact. So for example, if a company goes out of business, you know, it's not just the employees, it's the customers, it's the community, right? So the, this, this kind of um, intangible metric for understanding the impact of companies that, um, and there's lots and lots of data companies taking these little tiny data points and there's a lot of financial firms, you know, looking at this from a variety of different lenses. Um, I was just sort of curious as to, you know, how to understand this space in order to you know, be able to make an impact because if you don't understand it, how are you going to manage and make change or, or make sure that you are launching a sustainable company or you're, um, you're within a sustainable company. So it was really ab about tying all this together. And of course, I've been in the cyberspace for, you know, at least uh, four years launching a, a number of companies and working with, with a, a variety of companies in the cyber risk space in uh, Fido, which is the, uh, you know, the access side with a wonderful company from Europe called um, Crayonic. Uh, WiseKey is another company I'm working with, and they're involved with um, IoT and, um, and, you know, the ability to have identity associated with all these things that we have on connected networks. Uh, and, you know, cyber is a big threat. And so the data, the connectivity, it all comes together with ESG. I see how all of this stuff gets interwoven. Um, and, and, and certainly I would say uh, we're seeing a sea change moment here with the shift of a, of a new presidency in the United States. And one that certainly has given lip service at this stage to the idea that uh, sustainability and uh, kind of the ESG, probably the E of the SG has, will get more focus Probably the S and the G, as you rightly mentioned, needs need to get more focus as well. But you know, why is this so critical today for business? Well, a lot of the financial firms have now said that they will only invest in companies that are focused in ESG. And so you now have about 90% of the S&P companies that are actually reporting their ESG in, in different ways and maybe not 100% complete. But there is this um, interest in wanting to understand sort of the governance, the you know how ethical companies are. So even though the metrics and frameworks and indexes all you know have maybe what I'd say a little bit of a different view on what ESG is and what the impact is, I think there's an increased awareness um, that. Uh, is important to new employees. It's important to customers. I mean, customers aren't going to buy from a company that they feel is not doing good, right? So there's, there's an increase in awareness uh, that has become more and more important, you know, globally. Yeah, I, I, I would say that we've see, I've seen the same things, Christina, with um, really kind of like communications. Uh, uh, a lot of executives were criticized uh, really last year during the early stages of COVID because they would be talking about things, but not really kind of following through with things from an action point of view. And, and I think really kind of what you're talking about here with ESG is that uh, companies can't just talk about doing this stuff, but they really have to, to do it uh, now. Yeah. now. But it's not easy to do it. It's not easy to do it. And, and there are probably some big challenges. I mean, what are the things that you see that, that are, are hurdles for folks moving forward in this space? So, um, well, just to your point, the FCA is now requiring that any uh, financial firms in the UK uh, now have to provide a report at the end of this year. So. Demon this, this idea of demonstrating what you're doing as an organization in order to embed that within the fabric of your whole organization, both at the uh, C, you know, board level, C level, managers and employees is now becoming even more important. I think that the, the bigger issue is that people don't really understand what that means. And so um, putting together sort of a plan to, uh, you know, execute uh, 
on sort of sustainability plans is something that companies are still trying to work out a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, a, a, there's still a ton of, of, of process, a lot of work that companies still have to do in this space. Um, but I mean, Christina, you've helped companies for years really work through these thorny issues. I mean, when you think of, about all of the work that you're doing, not only obviously just in the sustainability and ESG space, but really in the cyberspace and all the other areas that inside chains touches, what gives you the most joy from, from your work? Well, it's interesting because um, this is a particular space that uh, is, is somewhat complex and hard to understand. And having the ability to not just help organizations, you know, uh, put together a plan and solve problems, but also in terms of re removing the ambiguity that exists, because there is a lot of ambiguity uh, that makes it hard to actually create uh, a sustainability plan or uh, a cyber risk assessment, or um, even understand the use of technology within their organizations. I mean, something as simple as um, having an agreement with a larger organization where you where you have all these terms and conditions. Now there's there's um, components, it goes beyond just having a penetration test for cybersecurity. You have to adhere to a certain level of security within the supply chain. You have to be able to adhere and report on sustainability because that gets rolled up and then reported in sort of annual reports and other sort of yearly um, reports. And so uh, I love complexity and being an engineer sort of digging in and being able to help to put together plans. And so in this space that's so ambiguous, uh, I, I love the opportunity to be able to create that clarity and create these plans and be able to use sort of a, all these different things I've been involved with as a, as a mechanism to actually create uh, solutions for organizations and people. Well, I have to say as uh, you know, somebody who's been able to look at an early draft of, of your book, I think the thing that gives me the most joy from your work is that you make complex things clear. So it's okay. very helpful uh, what, what, what this book outlines uh, and um, it will be very, very helpful for folks. As you think about how this space is going to evolve and you know, how we think about the, uh, the continued needs in the cybersecurity space, what is your hope for the future? Well, one of the bigger issues is that there is a, a level of complexity of all these various systems that are clobbered together. And um, as a result of that, you add the fact that people are working remotely and um, the, the access to systems, um, you know, obviously the, the FIDO Alliance out of Boston has been doing a lot of work uh, to try to create a, a more sort of secure mechanism by which to um, improve access. Uh, but my goal is really, or, or my, my hope for the future is that, um, you know, that we come up with something that the average person can utilize in order to be able to protect their, their finances, you know, their, their personal accounts and, you know, all of, you know, all those things that they have digitally stored, they're valuable to them. And I think we're, it's going to take a bit of work to get that stack to a point and get these technologies to a point where people have those in their hands. But my goal is really to be a part of that. Well, anything that can provide more, more structure and security uh, and uh, combine that with a little bit of simplicity, I hope, uh, in, in making sure that we can uh, protect our, our finances is going to be a really good thing. Uh, Christina Dolan, thank you so much for joining us today for Uncaged. Uh, Christina is the CEO and founder of Inside Chains. She has a new book coming out that outlines the ESG space uh, and, and, and its relationship to cybersecurity and sustainability. And, and um, I'm excited to, to see that book out and will be very, very helpful for folks. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Christina, again, thank you so much for joining us um, to outline really what you're working on and the thought leadership that you're providing. Um, we look forward to having you, you back on the show in the near future. In the meantime, uh, talk soon, everyone.